Good morning, folks. Assembly of God. Pastor Andy here. I just want to give you a little bit of encouragement today as there's a lot going through our minds and hearts today as we watch the news, social media, and we also learn the news of a, of a new COVID-19 case here in Forks of Washington. And some of the discussions I've been having with people have been awesome, super pop, uh, super uh, uh, positive. And, but the one subject that's been coming up a lot is the dreaded mask. If I put this thing on, am I compromising my religious convictions? Am I compromising on my convictions as an American? Because this mask to a lot of us is a symbol of, of compliance to something we don't agree with. That the orders of the governor's office that have come down upon the church and upon the just the communities at large, um, they're, they're a problem. They're a violation of our rights. And if you feel that way, and if you find yourself in that position, like, I feel like I'm being forced to compromise on my beliefs. That's okay. I've been in this place since it started. I've been down in depression and up again. I, I, I've been to the place where I wonder, as your pastor, am I doing the right thing? Am I being an exa- a good example? Or am I making my church fail? And... I've, I've been toying with this, and it takes a lot of wisdom from the Word of God and prayer to step back from the emotion that we attach to this piece of cloth to ask Jesus what he wants us to do. To answer the question, what hill do we die on? On Friday night, I was something special happened to me. I was reading the news. I read... The Supreme Court of the United States are going to uphold the restrictions the governor of California put on churches and that it is not a violation of First Amendment religious freedom. And that ruling is going to be, it's going to go back into court. It's going to be uh, discussed some more, but it affects us all. And I sat back for a second and thought, man, I've I've been relying on the First Amendment as my fallback plan. It's not there to catch me right now. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Andy, it was never meant to be your fallback plan. I'm your fallback plan. Because you're not of this world. You're passing through. You're of the kingdom of God. And friends, if we can look around on social media and watch TV for a few moments, and you you will know that the signs of the times are pointing that Jesus is ready to return and there are still many people who have not heard or known the message of hope that's in Jesus Christ. So the hill I'm willing to die on looks like Christ died for all people, which Paul expounds on in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. He says, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. Paul put his, puts himself in any circumstance that he might save some, to be a servant. To the Jews, he becomes like a Jew. To those who are under the law, like someone under the law, that he might win those that are under the law. For those who are weak, he becomes weak. But down in the verse 22, he says, I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And he goes on to say, Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be a partaker of it with you. Do you hear what he's saying? The gospel that saved him, the gospel that saved you, Jesus would go and do it again. If it was just one person, if it was just you, he would do it. Paul is making himself a servant to that. Putting on this mask would make a lot of sense if it would save lives, physically and spiritually. And, And maybe save a lot of lives, but Paul isn't, saying that what he's saying is that i might save some i'm putting myself under these restrictions that i might save some and this is the hill i think i found to die on because this sunday as i wore this mask or a mask like it and used it as a sermon example i did my normal altar call following the service and there was a white pickup truck in the back of the parking lot way back not interacting with any cars just way back there and his lights were flashing 
And I thought, great. So I said, the, we did the sinner's prayer and y'all honked and celebrated and we didn't know what happened after that. Except that gentleman called me on Monday. And he said, I don't know what happened, but during that altar time, that time you called us to flash our lights, I reached out my hand and I don't know why it did it, but it flashed the lights. And then I repeated the prayer that you told me to pray and my life has been forever changed. And he was in tears and we met again on Tuesday in tears of the transformation that's beginning to take place of a random truck that was in the back of the parking lot that responded to the gospel. And so I put this on that I might save some. I put myself under restrictions because I'm not under this, under the restrictions of this world. I am of the kingdom of God and Jesus is coming back again. And so I'm not going to be the mass police on Sunday. But I will be the example. I will be wearing it and uh, so that I can save some. And I want to encourage you to do the same. But God bless you today and continue to have these conversations in prayer and in wisdom. And um, we'll see you at Driving Church at 10 and 11 a.m. And make sure to be praying at 714 a.m. and p.m. Let's pray for our country because nothing we do, not my religious freedoms, not protests or anything else, is going to save this country. It's only Jesus Christ who can save this country, and that's, and that's the hill we're going to die on. God bless you.